Hey guys, how's it going? Kermode here. Welcome to the next part of our beginner Ableton course. In this video, I'm going to be showing you guys the clip properties inside of Ableton, what the different functions are inside of clips. Now, if you don't have any audio to check out the clips of, make sure to grab my beginner Ableton sample pack in the description of this video. It has all the essentials you need, but we got a lot to cover, so I don't want to waste your time. Let's get going. So once you have your clip in Ableton, you can double click it to see the actual clip down below here. And I'm going to start over on the left. So on the left here, you have a, the name of the actual clip. So I can call it clip. And you can just double click it. You can see it renamed it on the actual arrangement view here as well. You have a drop down menu where you can select the color of the clip. And the clip can actually have its own internal time signature, which is actually different than the time signature up here for your session. So you can actually have different time signatures per clip. Here is where you're gonna select your groove for your clip. And if you don't know anything about groove, we actually go over that in an earlier video. Over here, you get some information about the clip. You have its name, which if you click, will actually bring you back to its root inside of your clips, which is inside of your audio clip uh, folder, which is really useful. And then you have some information about the sample rate and bit depth of the clip. If you have an external sample editor, you can hit edit here and that'll bring that up. And you have this save function where if you edit a clip to be a certain way, you can hit save and then the next time you bring it in, it'll actually be that way. That's actually pretty cool. You have a reverse button to the right of that so you can actually reverse your clip. Pretty neat. And you have a high quality button here, which will just play your, your sample back at a higher quality. Uh, if you can afford the CPU, I personally recommend it. To the right of that, you have a RAM button, which will load that sample into RAM if you want to do that. And then below that, you have the individual volume for the individual clips. So clips will actually have their own volume. Now you have a transposition knob here. which works in semitones, as well as a detune, which works in sense. So that's pretty useful as well. Now here you have the warp function and with this off, you can't actually warp your clip and you can't loop it either. So if I undo that, my clip here isn't gonna be warpable. If I turn this on, I can now warp this clip here. So warping from our last video, I can stretch and I can edit and I can mangle this. Now below that you have a slave button and what this will do is it'll actually take the tempo that it estimates it at, it's at and it will actually make your master up here that tempo. So that can be useful as well if you actually wanna make a clip the master tempo and make Ableton slave to that. Below that, you have the segment BPM. So this actually is between warp markers, what BPM Ableton estimates it originally was at, and each warp marker will have a different value. You can then stretch or compress your clip by doubling or halving its length. And you have the warp modes that we went over in our last video. Now you have a start arrow, which will right here, which you can change in bars, bars, beats, and sixteenths, or you can move yourself. So this will change where in the clip you actually start. You then also have an end arrow, so you can choose when the clip ends. Notice how up top on the timeline it's adjusting. Now below that, you can turn on loop. And what loop will do is it'll actually allow you to loop your clip. This has separate brackets because what will happen is once it reaches the end of the loop, it'll then loop to the beginning. So if we stretch this out, so we reach the loop end, you'll notice here there was a little line because it actually starts to loop there. You'll see there's a line, there's a line. If I make the loop shorter, notice our loop getting tighter as well. So you can actually loop inside of clips. Now moving over to a MIDI clip, we have some pretty similar parameters. You have the name, color, time signature, groove. You can stretch or compress your clip by having or doubling its length. 
And you can actually see the note range here, which if you click, you could actually shuffle around. That's pretty cool. You can reverse the MIDI, invert it, legato button, which will stretch the MIDI to be as long as the next uh, clip MIDI or piece of MIDI. You have a duplicate loop, which will actually just duplicate the whole length of the loop and make a duplicate. Very straightforward. And then you have the same start and air. You have the same start and loop position. Now down here, you can open up the automation window, which we're going to be going into in our next video. So make sure to check that out. But then there's actually one more thing that's invisible that you can't do on arrangement view that you can do on session view. So I'm actually going to grab a bunch of drum clips real quick, and I'm going to put it on an audio track here on session view. So now here in session view, I've got a bunch of clips loaded up. And you'll notice that down here, another little button appeared, and that is this L, and that is the launch window. And the launch window inside of Ableton is a little window that allows clips based off certain settings to launch other clips. This is really cool. You can also dictate how the clip itself launches. By default, it's in trigger mode. And what that means is when I click it, it triggers. The next is gate mode. And what this will do is it'll only play as long as I'm holding down the play button. When I let go, so does it. Toggle treats the play button like an on and off switch. When I click it again, it stops. Then the last one is repeat. And how repeat will work is based off your global quantize here, it'll keep triggering that. And when I release, it keeps playing. Pretty cool. This can be really fun for finger drumming live where maybe some clips like loop and create different stuttered amounts. Now, if you don't want it to launch based off the quantize of your session, you can do an internal quantize here. So we could do something small like 16th note. So even though this is eighth, that'll repeat on a 16th note. Again, great for finger drumming and things like that. Now below that you have a velocity percent and what this will do is it will actually apply volume changes to your clip based off the incoming velocity, how hard you're pressing your MIDI controller. And then below my favorite part are the follow actions. And what this is, is it allows you to, based off a certain time value and a certain action, tell your clip to launch another clip. So the first is the action time. This is divided into bars beats and sixteenths. So what I want to happen is after one bar, I want an action to happen. Right now, I want my clip to stop. So I'm going to press play and it stopped after a bar. Now I want it to play again. And it'll keep doing that. Now I want to play the next clip. And it actually triggered the next clip. You also have first, where it will go to the top clip, last, where it will go to the last one, any, where it will play any clip on the track, or other, where it will play any beside itself. Now you have two potential uh, instructions you can give it, and then a ratio of which, how much chance there is that it's going to be this one. So with a one to zero ratio, it's always going to play the next one. With a one to one ratio, it is just as likely to maybe play any other clip. So that time it picked the next one. Uh, that time it triggered a random clip. So what's really fun, and this is actually a cool, more advanced technique, is if you have all your clips selected, you can edit them all at once. I'm going to make sure they all have warp on, they all have loop, they're all on trigger mode, they're all on the global quantize, and every one and two sixteenth notes, it's going to trigger any clip. So now what's going to happen is it's randomly triggering clips. And if I hit arrangement view record, you can see that it actually created loops for me by randomly triggering those loops.
pretty nifty. So this is cool for making loops. This is also cool for live performance if you kind of want to back up so you know the next clip will play, even if you forget to trigger something pretty handy. So there we go, guys. That's actually everything I wanted to show you guys with clip properties. If you don't have clips to take a look at, make sure to grab my beginner Ableton sample pack in the description of this video. But I hope you hang around to check out more because this course still has a few more videos to go. So I hope you got a lot out of this. If you did, leave a like, maybe leave a comment, and maybe even share it around. That would help more than you know. And thanks again. I'm Kermode. Peace.